as a tourist, have you ever fixated on something really trivial about your destination, but if you didn't do it, then your trip wouldn't be complete? Well, I'm in Edinburgh, Scotland right now. Enchanting city. It's got medieval streets, the royal palace, and a big old castle. But I don't care about any of that right now. All I want is to try a deep-fried Mars bar. Have you heard of this? They deep-fry their candy bars here. I love this place. Castles and medieval streets will just have to wait. Hello. Oh, hi. May I have a deep-fried Mars bar? Certainly. Oh, I'm so excited. So, do you, you dip it in batter? Yeah, that's a bar. How long do you cook it for? 30 seconds. Let's oh. start. Really quick. Excellent. Just in case I want to try it at home, you know. And it's only like, well, it started in Scotland? Yeah, it started in Scotland. <laughs> oh, let me just see that. That is so beautiful. Look at that. It's really like a deep-fried candy bar. Okay. Can I eat it right now or is yeah. it too hot? No, you can eat it. I can. Go okay. ahead, yeah. That's awesome. Enjoying it? Yes, it's wonderful. Fant I told you it's fantastic. Mm. Okay, now let's go see us at Castle. Orientation. Edinburgh is the capital of Scotland. Scotland is a part of the United Kingdom, which is made up of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It's also known as Great Britain. Now, England and Scotland are two very different countries with two very different cultures. So the Scottish are not English. They are, however, British. So it's just important to get your issues straight. If there's one defining landmark that is Edinburgh, Scotland, it has to be Edinburgh Castle. It sits on a volcanic crater carved by a glacier. Quite a dramatic location. This was the main royal castle for Scotland, and it endured battle after battle with the English until the two crowns finally united. It certainly has an intimidating look to it, doesn't it? That's how some castles are majestic and fairy tale like. This one, you know, really scared people, which is, I guess, the point. Most of the stone buildings you see were built in the mid 1300s. However, there has been a castle on the spot since the 11th century. Now, this has been a fortress, a royal palace, a garrison, and a prison. So, aside from just walking around going, Wow, we are in a bona fide castle. Uh, most visitors come here because it holds a fascinating account of Scottish history. In the late 1700s, the castle became a prison of war uh, held here where sailors captured from the ships of Britain's enemies, and there were a lot of them at the time. You've got Spain, Holland, France, and a little startup country known as America. When you walk through here, you can have a sense of what it was like to be a prisoner of war in the 18th century. The doors of the prison are actually a separate exhibit because they're very special. The prisoners uh, had a lot of time on their hands and they carved beautiful graffiti into the doors and historians were able to get a lot of information from these doors. Look up here, see what that is? It's an early version of the American flag, amazing. But wherever you are in Edinburgh Castle, you'll want to drop what you're doing and head outside as it approaches one o'clock because there's ongoing history happening up on the battlements. This is the ritual known as the firing of the one o'clock gun, which has been done every day except Sundays since 1861. Tom McKay, a.k.a. Tam the Gun, has been the district gunner for 25 years and counting. He checks his watch. We're now going to walk down the famous Royal Mile, which begins at the castle and ends down at Holyrood Palace. This is a road that takes you through medieval Edinburgh, and it's an area known as Old Town. Now this, this is the main tourist hub, uh, because it is loaded, and I do mean loaded, with shops, museums, and pubs celebrating all things Scottish. On one street, you can buy inexpensive shortbread to luxurious cashmere. Some shops are exceptional, others are downright corny. August is a very exciting time to be in Edinburgh. It's when all the festivals take place. There's the International Festival, uh, Jazz and Blues Fest, Book Fest. Right now, the streets are closed because of the Fringe. This is a festival celebrating the Avant Garde. Hey, 
This is Edinburgh's busy month. 400,000 people arrive to experience the festivals. So if you don't like crowds and mayhem, don't come in August. I nearly threw the camera. So we've made it to the end of the Royal Mile, to the Palace of Holyrood House. It was always so cold and rainy up at the castle, so the royals moved their home down here. Now, one of its most famous residents was Mary, Queen of Scots. Now, it is Her Majesty's official home when she is in Scotland. As a tourist, you can pay around $15, see some of the state rooms, the Queen's Gallery. However, when she is home, no one goes inside. Can you believe that? It's like, who does she think she is? The Queen of England? All right. Hello. Oh. Morning, lass. You look wonderful. Did you just call me a lass? I love that. So that <laughs> you called me a lass. I am a lass, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> no, I love your outfit. And it, it's to me, it seems like you're very well dressed. Is this more casually, or is this? Are you dressed for a ceremony? Really casual. Lass. It is casual. Really casual. And what is the, your hat called? It's a Balmoral or a Tam. Uh -huh. Tam and and you've got a little sprig of something Three in there. Sprig. Well, the Highlanders, when they went into battle, would always pick up sprigs of heather, put it into their bonnets for good luck. Uh -huh. And your your purse? I know it's not a purse, sorry. I, I, what is that? It's a sporin. 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 A wee sporin. A wee sporin. sporin. That's sporin. it. Are you rolling your eyes well? <laughs> and what was it for? To keep things in? Well, it protected the nether region. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I asked for that one, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but primarily, it carried your wee bit hot meal. Because uh -huh. in the battle, the three of the battle, you had something to eat. Uh -huh. Well, I personally love a man in a kilt. You look so handsome. Thank you so much Excellent. for talking Thank to me. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Afternoon, lass. Lass? He called me lass. <laughs> in Scotland, the only thing more popular than the kilt may just be the pub. And Edinburgh has its share of classic watering holes. Just off the Royal Mile is where I found the Bow Bar. With its huge selection of whiskeys and beers, it's a local favorite. Hello. Hi there. I would like to try a wee dram of scotch, please. What would you suggest? Um, well, it depends what you like. I mean, there are different types of whiskey. You can have smoky ones or sweet ones, dry ones. I think I'll, I'll try the sweet one. Try the sweet one. Yeah, yeah. Now, what exactly is a wee dram? A wee dram just means a small quantity of whiskey. Oh, good. I was hoping I didn't mean a pint. <laughs> <laughs> You sort of move it around just like wine, right? Yeah. Just kind of look at the color. Drink it almost like wine. Just have a sniff of it. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty strong in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're brave enough, now you can try a sip. Okay. Oh, very smooth. You're right. Now, scotch is whiskey, but not all whiskeys are scotches. That's true. A whiskey, yeah. spelled W-H-I-S-K-Y, has to be a scotch. So it has to be from Scotland. Any other whiskey that's spelled W-H-I-S-K-E-Y can be from anywhere else in the world. So you get bourbon whiskey from America. Interesting. So Grandma's hooch is not scotch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like this. I like this a lot. Next, the secret to Edinburgh's past may be found three stories underground. And Edinburgh Castle sets the stage for one of the hottest tickets in town. That's where I'll take you when Passport to Europe returns. favorite activity, if not a strenuous one, is to explore all the closes here in Old Town. These are steep, narrow alleyways that run off of the Royal Mile. They got their name close because they'd be closed off at night, you know, to keep the riffraff out. And it's hard, you know, just walking around not to think how charming these are, when in reality, this was a dirty, stinking, rotten place. If I was walking around in the 16th century, I'd have to be on guard for the cry, Guard you! Which meant someone up above was dropping the contents of their chamber pot their own waste onto the street. There's a myth that Edinburgh has an underground city, but beneath these streets, there's a maze of narrow passageways and homes that for centuries have been inhabited by ghosts. Well, that myth is actually quite true. And if you should go down into the depths, you will want to bring a doll. Carefully mind your step now. As you come down the steps, you're making your way three and a half stories beneath the Royal Mile onto Mary King's Close itself, where all sorts of people were living here back in 1629. At that time, Mary King's Close was a neighborhood on street level, but there have since been three and a half centuries of Edinburgh construction on top of it. So carefully come this way. As you make your way down Mary King's Close now, you can imagine all sorts of people, different classes and various walks of life, living on the street here as they would have done. If you look behind you just now, indeed you can see a little room similar to what Mary King herself would have had when she lived here back in the day. 
the furniture, like that wooden settle or seat that you can see there. And on the top shelf, we've got two drinking vessels. Goodness knows I'll be needing a strong drink by the time we're finished today. So uh, do keep an eye on those as we make our way around. These catacombs are literally where people lived and, so the story goes, where they died. Well, let's not hope you've caught the plague, otherwise you might end up staying here for two to six weeks, or perhaps death, whichever comes sooner. The entire close and everyone in it was said to be sealed up in an effort to contain the bubonic plague, making this one of the most haunted sites in all of Scotland. So, how do you feel in this room just now? Feeling anything at all? It's pretty creepy. Mm. Yeah. It's because you're not alone. In this room just now, there is a little girl called Annie. Annie was a little child who lived here in Edinburgh at the time of the plague in 1645. At the time of her death, we find that Annie had only the company of one little doll to uh, ease her suffering. But having died, of course, the doll had gone missing. But when the story spread to the four corners of the world, all sorts of people would come to this room, leaving the things that you see here gathered beside us. People hope by leaving their own token to finally bring Annie's soul to rest. I have a little doll. Excellent. Hopefully Annie will like this. Edinburgh is a very compact city. You're never far from anything, and the easiest way to get around, the most pleasurable way, is just to walk. Uh, there are also two very distinct areas here. There's Old Town and New Town. Easy enough to remember, right? Right now, I'm in New Town, and it was founded by the wealthy of Old Town who thought, oh, it's getting too crowded, it's unsanitary. We want a place where there are wider streets and more elegant homes and peaceful gardens, and so they made it. Uh, New Town today is where you're going to find the locals. This is where they work, shop, and eat and shop. <laughs> when it comes to accommodations here in Edinburgh, most people have their hearts set on a traditional hotel. But there's a new kid on the block that even the locals are really excited about it, so I think they're on to something. See right behind me? This is the Glass House, and uh, it's a hotel that mixes old and new. That's a, a church facade, and behind that is a modern glass tower. And inside, it is truly smashing. The Glass House has been listed in Condé Nast Traveler magazine's top 50 hotels across the world. Everyone from Kelly Osborne to Meryl Streep has stayed here. This is a boutique hotel with only 65 rooms. Most of the rooms wrap around an unbelievable two-acre rooftop terrace. All the suites here are named after Scotch whiskies. This one is the Glen Turret Suite. You even get a small sampling of the stuff over there. Great room, huh? I mean, very modern, contemporary design. Love it. Love the wood floors, the leather sofa, and this is cool too. This TV swings over so then you can watch it in bed. Very comfortable. And most of the rooms here have one of these. A balcony. And this being the corner suite has a wraparound balcony that reveals a gorgeous fog-shrouded Calton Hill. I mean, this is the sort of geography you'll want to see in Scotland, and it's right here in the city. Calton Hill is home to some of the most interesting and eccentric monuments in Great Britain. This memorial to Lord Nelson is designed to look like an upside-down telescope. And this Parthenon was intended to be a tribute to the fallen in the Napoleonic Wars. But the money ran out and it remained unfinished. Still to this day, Edinburgh is called the Athens of the North. And Calton Hill is a great place for panoramic views of the city. Whenever the weather clears up, of course. Edinburgh has had many bloody battles in its history, and to commemorate its military heritage, the city holds an annual extravaganza called the Edinburgh Military Tattoo. And on the evening I went, I happened to run into the gentleman who told me about kilts. His name is Lawrence Gilhooley. Now, what exactly is a military tattoo? Well, its origins is from the Dutch, a Dutch word, which I find quite unpronounceable. <laughs> and basically what it was, it was the drummers calling the people into the city at night. But it, as, it, as uh, the centuries went by, it became synonymous with the military as a call, a call to arms or a call to the barracks. Against the spectacular backdrop of Edinburgh Castle, the military tattoo plays to nearly 10,000 spectators every Monday through Saturday night throughout the month of August. Surprising and especially inspiring about this ceremony is its symbolism, that hundreds of musicians from all over the world have brought their pipes to this place and combined them into one mighty instrument. It's more beautiful than I would have thought. Next, you may have wondered what a Scotsman wears under his kilt, but what's inside his hat? All will be revealed when we return.
the Scottish are certainly known for loving a good walk. And here in Edinburgh, uh, one of the best places to do that is at Prince's Street Gardens. This is a gorgeous, green, lush park. Definitely a payoff for all the rain they've been having. I will say, this is a city that is not in any way undone by its weather. Actually, the architecture, the food, the whiskey tastes just as good, if not a little better when there's a little mist in the air, a little chill. The gardens are a link between old and new town, and if you look up at the north side, you'll see it's really developed, a lot of traffic. But thankfully, through an act of parliament way back in 1816, they preserved the south side, so it will always look just like that. And you must come here, if only, to see the view of the castle. Incredibly dramatic. I mean, look at that. you got to think that more than a few conspirators were thrown to their deaths off of that ledge, right? <laughs> well, that was a pleasant thought. Do you take requests? Uh, depends what's on the CD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a CD player yeah, there. Yeah, it's a What's your request, man? Now, that is, that's a military uniform, right? I mean, you would fight in that. Yes. Or they did fight very, in that. Very much so. In point of fact, during the Napoleonic Wars, this is how the Highland soldier faced his enemies. That's quite a hat. That would protect your head? Not really. <laughs> <coughs> um, as you can see, it's very, very flimsy. Ostrich feathers. And do you, do you store things in that hat? Looks yes, like we do. Room. Yes, we do. We have a mobile phone. When it rings, right. you know, it comes out and just give it a little flick. <laughs> <laughs> Quite cool, eh? <laughs> we have a, a brush with a mirror. What do you use the brush for? Your hat? Well, unfortunately, I have no hair. Oh. So it has to be the moustache. <laughs> what else do we have in here? <laughs> unfortunately, no whiskey. Lucky for him, I know just the place to remedy that situation. Locals agree that Sandy Bells is Edinburgh's best-known gathering place for folk musicians looking for a tune. Now, my main impression of Edinburgh is that it is a very genuine city. You walk down the Royal Mile and you'll see things like the kilts and the cashmere and the bagpipes, the scotch. And while these are all goods there for the tourists, they're also based on traditions and a craftsmanship that is as important today as it ever was. Like listening to Scottish folk music here at Sandy Bells. This isn't put on for visitors to see how Edinburgh once was. This is how Edinburgh is. If you want to learn more about what I did in Europe, talk about the show, or check out my photos and journal, log on to Travel Channel at Discovery.com. See you there.